Okay, I think the key to the success of the brand globally is that uh, we have a great story to tell from an Irish perspective. So the, the brand and, and Ireland are really synonymous with each other um, and interlinked with each other. And uh, Ireland is very much associated with green imagery, uh, with a very pure, unspoiled landscape and all of those uh, attributes we try and build into our advertising and our communications internationally. In the markets where Ireland is known, we also try and inject the Irish personality and the humour, uh, which is again a very important uh, aspect to the country. So we spend uh, quite a lot of time in the market, physically in the market, uh, and increasingly we are trying to build teams in the market. So it's very difficult to run an international business out of Dublin exclusively, and we're not doing that. So we've opened offices in uh, Russia, China, and South Africa recently, and that's all about trying to build our understanding of, of those territories. Uh, but effectively we spend a lot of time in the market um, learning about the retail infrastructure, and uh, distribution infrastructure and that can be one of the biggest challenges actually in particularly em in emerging markets the what we call the route to market so uh, in the likes of China for example um, developed trade or retailers sorry that that we would know uh, represent only about one percent of the market uh, and the rest is effectively others uh, lots of smaller chains that you and I really wouldn't have heard of um, beforehand so the route to market is really key and understanding that and distribution distribution um, footprint is really important uh, and then of course it's consumers so spending time with consumers uh, formally and informally in terms of uh, research programs qualitative and quantitative just to understand um, how they consume the, the products that we're aiming to launch uh, what they like about the brands that they currently purchase and what they might like about our brand um, because invariably um, we're not going to be the first brand in the market. There's going to be a lot of competitors there beforehand um, with very entrenched equities and it's about trying to um, really try and, try and get that little bit of a, a, a niche and a difference um, that you can build a brand from. So again, uh, we have uh, we have teams in, in quite a few of those markets now. Russia and China, we have teams in the ground who will be able to oversee the rollout of a, of a marketing campaign, whether that's in the store or, or above the line. In other territories, we use exclusive distributors, uh, and we work very closely with them in terms of the um, in terms of the execution of the campaign itself. Um, so uh, all of the sign-off, of course, comes through comes through Dublin and comes through Ireland. Uh, and it's very important that we manage the, the global brand consistency. But um, yeah, increasingly it's about building teams in the market, getting close to partner agencies who can help us uh, deliver campaigns that have got to resonate with consumers. Um, I think one of the key differences that we would see is around the route to market, actually. Um, again, if you look at the Irish landscape now, you've got effectively three retailers, uh, Tesco, Super Value, Duns, and, and of course the discounters now coming up as a sort of fourth, um, fourth tier. Uh, in international markets, you will see, in many cases, particularly outside of Europe, a much uh, more fragmented chain. Uh, in the likes of China that, that I mentioned, you will have a huge amount of retailers and you will have um, what are known as silly city killers, for example, which are retailers that exist in just one city of maybe 10, 15 million people, and they will be very strong there and exist nowhere else. Uh, so it's quite different retailing uh, internationally. That's, that's one of the big differences uh, that, that, that we would see. In terms of um, marketing communications then, um, the, the above the line uh, channels that you, we will use typically won't be, I suppose, that much different. Um, you know, we will still use TV to a big extent in many markets, uh, press, outdoor, increasingly digital as well, of course, and that will be consistent across our developed markets. In the likes of China, to reference that again, it will be very different. So um, we won't have funds to use um, TV advertising, for example, but. There is a very exciting digital uh, landscape there. You have the likes of uh, WeChat, Weibo, both of whom who have uh, 400 million users, um, but people in Ireland would never have heard of them because they're just not, they don't exist here. So we have to learn all these platforms from scratch 
obviously in a language that we uh, find challenging to understand. Yeah, we, WeChat will certainly make uh, a move into Europe um, and increasingly when I uh, access that um, app here, I will see my friends have joined it in, uh, in across Europe, so it will make a move into into Europe. Uh, Facebook has, has, is, is banned in China, as is Twitter, so the platforms are, are brand new. Um, and increasingly, Chinese brands will, will, will um, uh, become saturated within their own domestic market and they, and they will look to Europe and the West for expansion, so it will be exciting to, to watch that happen. I think the the language is very important just to understand um, the terminology uh, used from a digital perspective is important um, and also just to get that confidence that you're not overawed when you're talking to um, digital marketing partners and agencies because uh, you know typically they will they will uh, I suppose um, blind you with some terminology that you might not necessarily understand um, it will it will I think it forced me to ask the right questions when I met uh, agency partners and you become more interested in it then of course and you try and um, you know learn more about it in, in, in any free time that you might have so uh, I think we're using it to good effect we can always do more and uh, the challenge is of course keeping on on top of digital because it's it just moves so fast and um, the, the the difficulty as well of course is that uh, the more platforms that come out you you as a brand need to make a choice on which are the which are the platforms particularly from a social perspective that you can realistically manage um, from a from a content prov provision perspective and moderation because it's um it becomes very difficult from a resourcing perspective Uh, I think we have a, a bright future for Kerrygold. Uh, in 2015, there is going to be an abolition of, of uh, dairy quotas in Europe. Uh, what that will mean is that any European country can produce uh, as much milk as they possibly can. Um, that is, that is going to be a new frontier, really, for dairy producers. Uh, and because Ireland produces their dairy products from, from grass, rather than from grain, for example, uh, we will have a fantastic, relatively low-cost uh, production method, and the expectation is the uh, dairy output will increase by 50%. So it's going to be then incumbent on the Irish Dairy Board to find new routes to market for those products. We're going to have to open up new geographies, and within the geographies that we're already uh, retailing, we're going to have to find new products to sell. So new product development will p play a key part as well. Um, so we will have to move outside of our core categories of butter, cheese and, and milk powder. We're going to have to get more exciting products to launch for consumers as their tastes become more sophisticated. Uh, well, I think in, in Germany is probably a good example. It's a market where we are there for 40 years. Uh, the brand is famous in, 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 um, in Germany, uh, we, but we, we were really a butter brand for, for a long time there. And increasingly what we're trying to do now is, is, is build the butter uh, credentials and reputation through the launch of new flavors, for example. Um, but increasingly the, the idea is to move beyond butter. So we have uh, launched uh, quite a few new cheeses this year in Germany. Um, and the opportunity then is to move into more, um, perhaps more convenience formats into the future. Great. So we think it will, it will be a, continue to be a very strong market for us.